Hey, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to talk about simple variance analysis. How do you do a variance to plan and a variance to budget? What we are going to go through today is what is variance analysis? We're going to look at looking at the variance in dollars versus percent, the variance to budget versus the variance to prior year, and we're going to actually do it in Excel, and we're going to then talk about limitations to just a simple variance analysis and, and what does it take to get to good variance analysis. So the basics. Variance analysis is really just analyzing the difference between the actual numbers or your results and the budget or the prior year, but you're really just comparing two different sets of numbers together to see what the variance is. Uh, typically, you're going to see this done on either a dollar basis or a percent basis. And we're going to get back to this at the end, but good variance analysis doesn't stop there. So now let's jump right into the Excel. All right, so here are some financial statements. Pretty simple income statement. We've got 2019 through 2021, and we've got the 21 plan. So let's start off with a very simple V to prior year dollars. So what we're showing here is how much did each of these accounts change year over year? And what we're gonna, the way we're gonna get that is we're gonna simply take the current year, 2021, minus the prior year, 2020, and that gives you your variance. So you get 7.25 million. If you do the math here, you go 100.8 100, 100 minus 93.5, that gives you 7.25. It makes sense. Now what you can actually do is that's going to be the same thing as you go down. So you've got 7.2, you get 2.1 here on cost of sales. And the way we have this in here is we're showing the 7.2 minus the 2.1. You can actually check too by doing the same calculation and you have it two ways to make sure that it's the same. That should always be the same, but it's a nice check sometimes just to validate. So what you want to do is you want to continue copying this formula on down the rest of the accounts. And then you could, what you can do is you can take the format from one of these columns and paste it right over. And now you have nice looking data. And again, you can do one last check where you can say 2021 minus 2020, this 4.6 equals this 4.6. So your V to prior year looks good. Now let's move on to V percent. Let's just look at how we do that. So we have the variance and what you want to do is take that variance divided by the prior year. So that 2021 minus 2020 divided by 2020 gives you your 8%. So this shows that you are actually up 8% on your net revenue. And again, you can copy these formulas down. So now you've got your V to prior year. For each of these accounts and you can see sales are up 8% and cost of sales is only up 3% so that's some positive leverage there and that the difference between those two means that your gross profit margin is actually up 33% and as you go down through these you can see how you have some pretty big percentages down here and you know depending on where you work you may actually show 595% variance is just an F saying it's a favorable variance. And this would be a great business to be in if you were actually up 600% in net income year over year. Now continuing on, let's do the same thing with V to budget. And we're gonna do dollars first. So just like we did, take 2021 minus our budget, and that gives you your variance. So 100.7 is different than the 98.1. It's up by 2.6 million, and that's your variance. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to copy these all the way down. And then we will take our formula, our formats, and paste them over so we have nice, good looking data. Now let's do our variance percent to budget. So we're going to take the variance divided by our budget. And just like we did before, we're going to copy that all the way down. The rest, copy that all the way down. And we can take our format. And copy that again so it looks good. So now what you start to see is interesting is and why it's important to look both versus prior year and variance to budget. And let's come back to that interesting comment. Now it's not typically an account 
uh, you might spend a ton of time on it's small dollars but just to show you an example you were you were you looked at it and you said you're up 100 almost 130 percent but then you look in your budget and you say the 39,000 is what we actually plan to have an interest income so it makes you feel a lot better to know hey that's actually what we thought and as you look through these different variances, again, it's a really good story for this business. So you're up 33% from prior year, but you're also up 24% from what you planned. And your sales are actually even better than you planned, and your costs are down from plan. You were already thinking you were going to get some leverage here where your sales, sales growth was outpacing your cost of good sales. But it got even better when you got into the, when you look at it versus where you thought you were going to land. And as you go down again, selling general administrative costs were down lower than you budgeted. So really good story. And it all landed you $3.9 million better net income than you had planned or up 270%. Before we get into the limitations of variance analysis, I want to give you a few reminders. Some we touched on as we went through the Excel, but these are some things to make your variance analysis more effective. So the first is look at both dollars and percent. You have some accounts, especially on an income statement, where you have sales and cost of goods sold, which are huge dollars, and they might be so significantly larger than, let's say, your SGNA account, that when you look at the variance dollars on SGNA, it's just a rounding error when you compare it to what's going on in the variance dollars to sales. But you may have a, an instance where your SGNA spending is doubling. On flat sales and that's a problem you, you you may have a real cost control problem going on or, so, or something else but you'd want to dig in deeper so looking at both those dollars and percents important and it's also good to look at both uh, what your variance is versus budget and prior year because like in the Excel you may have a large percent or dollar variance but maybe you planned it so you know exactly what's going on and you were you were predicting that that was going to happen you already knew so it's important to look at both of those and if you have the data trending. So you may have six, eight, 12 quarters worth of data and you may look at the trends that are going on. That can be very insightful. Looking at accounts relative to other accounts, especially sales. So sales is going to be the one that you're often going to peg these things to. But cost of goods sold versus sales. So if your sales are going up 10%, but your cost of goods sold are only going up 2%, that's an 8% gap, and that's going to give you more gross margin. That's a great thing if your sales are increasing faster than your costs. But let's say your sales are going up 10 and your costs up 12, that, that can be a problem. You might have a cost control problem. You could have other things going on. But looking at those comparisons can tell you a lot. You can also look at your accounts relative to units. Um, so if you think if you were in, let's say, the car business or Toyota or Ford, you may look at your cost of good sale per car. You make your sales per car or your SG&A per car. These are things that you can uh, levelize your data with or give you, give you another cut to analyze and see what's going on. These type of things are what can set your variance analysis apart uh, from just doing a really simple look. So some limitations and how you can be better. Um, Seeing the dollar or percent change isn't going to tell you the whole story. Just like seeing just the prior year or just the budget change doesn't tell you the whole story. You need to dig deeper. You need to tie what's actually going on in the business to the numbers that you're looking at. So what does that mean? Uh, let's take an example like um, sales. So if your sales were up 10%, it's not enough to just go in and tell whoever you're reporting to or you're doing, uh, you're presenting the information to that, hey, sales are up 10%. No, no, no. You need to get to another level of detail. Who are your customers? So what customer is going up or what customer is going down? Or is there a detail in which products you're selling that's changed? You may, for instance, find out that a large customer has placed in order for six months worth of product when they normally order every single month, but they're trying to get out ahead in some spike in demand or they have ex extra cash. That's the type of stuff that the CFO or the, the general manager or the head of the sales department would want to know is 
what is the story behind what's going on? And the way you really find these things out is you pick up the phone or you walk down the hall and you find a sales director and you say, hey, I looked at the data and I see that this one particular customer has placed a really huge order. And they can probably tell you what's going on and give you that detail. And now when you go into that meeting or you start to present your information, you can weave it into a story. And you can say, look, sales are up 10%. Here's exactly what's going on. Don't expect this to continue because this customer pulled forward their orders. And now we're going to see the next three, four, five months of light orders from that customer. That's the type of thing you want to look at. And that also means you might have some accounting ramifications where you might have to spread that out over time or you know, you have to talk to your technical controller to understand what you need to do there. But that's just an example of the type of detail that you want to get into when you're doing your analysis. Just doing the numbers isn't going to make you a good and a, a great analyst. You have to go to another level of detail. So that's all we have for you today. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave questions or comments. We'll try to get you answers and make sure you come back because we have more content coming soon.